There were several times in that little journey just to get back to base camp where I kid you not, Mark, I know it's I know it's a bad thing when I start thinking about my daughters and my wife and I'm like, I gotta play this right. All right, what is up Vortex Nation? And what is up Vortex Nation? In the booth here at the Western Hunting Conservation Expo. The booth is a buzz with activity. If you hear an elk bugle in the background, you hear a duck call, you hear general chatter. That's just ambiance. That's just the great ambiance about of, of being around other like-minded hunting folks and, and chatting about hunting. Joining me today, one of those like-minded folks, Mr. Ryan Lampers, one of my personal friends, a fan favorite of the Vortex Nation podcast, a wealth of knowledge and a wealth of hunting stories, which is what we're going to do today. This is a special edition storyteller series where Ryan's going to spin a yarn, if you will, but it's going to be a true story, one of his most memorable hunt stories. And, and I'll say this, with that, your cousin, mm-hmm. Joey, told this story to me like two years ago. Man. And I, I heard that it and I was, like, I was like, well, I, but here's, here's the thing. I was like, this is an incredible story. We need to get you guys on here to do a podcast about that story. True. Here we are today. Yep. We're doing it. We are. Now, that was quite the introduction, by the way. I don't know if I can live up to that. But <laughs> yeah, thank that, you. That story, when Joey tells it, probably much better than when I tell it. Because you, know, you and I know both. Joey is quite the storyteller. Like oh, he's yeah. animated, he's talking with his hands. He, I was just telling you, he can drag a 10 minute tail into two hours, somehow, some way. I was hanging on every word though. He's I mean, like good. you said, he's good. You buckle up. Yeah. He's the guy you want to just have you ha- have read books to you <laughs> because he's just like, he gets animated and, he, and he's a great storyteller. I wish I had that, uh, that capability, but, um, I yeah, mean, likely yeah. it's a whitetail story, right? Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have any good whitetail stories. Oh man. So yeah. Uh, yeah. When you, uh, hit me with that question about what story to tell, it was like, um, it's a tough one. Like, what, what's the most memorable hunt, you know, to, to try to talk about? And if you're old like me, you have a few in the, you know, in the hopper there. So um, I'm actually glad that Joey told you this story. So you have a little bit of idea. You actually brought it up and said maybe this one would be good because I was struggling to figure out which one to tell. But I think most memorable, it always comes back to which ones had you suffering the most which ones were the most difficult physically mentally had all those things yeah sucked at the time but uh in hindsight some of the best hunts come from those so i I always say they're always the coolest uh when you get back home and when you live to tell the tale yeah yeah when you get to tell your kids and your wife how close you were to death and all those (laughs) kinds of things you know (laughs) they don't ever want you to go again Oh, but, um, yeah, so let's dig into this one. Uh, this was, uh, this was a story, not a whitetail story, it's a mule deer story. Um, the best hunts are typically mule deer okay. Uh, hunts. Okay, I'm listening. Mark. So, uh, this story started off with, surprisingly, probably the most people I've ever hunted with in my life. It actually, we actually had a base camp. Okay. And so, we had, there were seven, six six or seven of us um let me get that straight there were six of us so big group of guys you know and and joey my cousin who i've hunted with grew up with we're like brothers we've done a lot of trips together where it's two of us or i've done a lot of solo he's done a lot of solo but this hunt was something different this was a six-man team of guys base camp they had a wall tent when we got there and uh they were actually hunting a couple days before we got there but um, we got there, they had done some scouting, they had seen some things. We ended up, uh, kind of, uh, getting to the, getting to the base camp a little bit late in the day. And we decided we didn't know where they were. They were off hunting somewhere. We decided, well, we're going to go, we're going to go hop up the hill and just kind of get an eyeball for this new country. This was country that all I, all I know of it is it looked really, really good on Google earth, you know? It looked gnarly, it looked steep, it had that reputation. Uh, had all the things that you hope for in some really nice mule deer country. 
And the goal of this trip was um, try to find some old crusty bucks that were, you know, very mature and, and not settled, definitely willing to eat those tags if we just never could locate one. Uh, we had 10 days in front of us, so we had the time to put in. And one of the best parts was we had weather. Like we had, there had already been a good hefty dump of snow above us, which kind of brought a lot of the deer already down. And we had some good weather in front of us, it looked like, so it was gonna continue. Like and you were gonna continue to get some, some nasty weather? Yeah, or, okay, yeah. yeah, continue to get more snow, more cold, all the things that you just absolutely love in a, a late season, November, migration slash rut hunt, you know, you hope for weather. And so that first day we went up on the hill and we realized pretty quick, like, man, the, the snow was actually not that far up. We only had to gain probably a thousand feet and, and there it was. And what that did was it brought a lot of that migration already down to us. So we were seeing a lot of deer, like a lot of young bucks, a lot of does, like numbers. I think we, I think we saw something like a hundred mule deer or something that, that first oh, day. Man. And we only had like, you know, a couple hours of daylight. So we got back to camp that night, uh, met with the boys and, and got to talk to them, kind of hear what they'd been seeing. And, you know, from what we got, it was a lot of the same, like we had just seen in that evening was it, it was a lot of deer, a lot of numbers, a lot of forkies, young bucks, like not really seeing anything of age class. There was no talk of, uh, like a four and a half year old or five and a half year old buck yet. And going into this, Joe, we had done our scouting we'd done our um our prep online and we had a few areas picked out and these were areas where we wanted to get some big separation from that base camp from the trail and so that's kind of what we did that next day we ended up uh getting a few days of food on our back and we had the intention of putting a minimum of six miles between us and base camp in some real nasty terrain you know, in certain areas, six miles might not be enough, but this country with how it laid out, real rocky, real steep, add, you know, a good amount of snow, not too high on the hill, and it was going to be a struggle to get those six miles. When you, and I, and I know you, and I, and I know some of these areas that you like to hunt, and so when you're saying that it's nasty, tough country, like, it almost sounds, I'm picturing like, hmm, that's nearly impassable. <laughs> it's... Well, it, it has the look of, uh, like, just think of sheep country. You know, there's a lot of rocks, a lot of rims, a lot of potential to get cliffed out. So you really got to be aware. You got to be focused on your on your screen a lot of times, especially in, you know, nighttime travel, stuff like that. But, yeah, it's intimidating. Like, you take a glance, even from our base camp, you take a glance around, and it looks like sheep country. Fact is, we were seeing sheep. So, um yeah, the rocks, all that stuff. Now we had we had a little bit of a trail for a certain part of our journey. Um, we had this X on the map where we wanted to get to, and we knew it was going to take us a couple of days to get there, uh, which tells you something. It's only six miles, right? But, so we head up the deal, uh, head up the trail. We ended up getting off trail, and we start hitting the snow line, and you know we're looking at all these deer, and we're just seeing really good numbers of deer but still nothing in the age class that we're looking for we put quite a bit of time getting up to the top rim we ended up getting up there and we're post holing through there's like two feet of snow on the top which was you know which is great because we knew once we get to the top it's going to be a a steep decline down into this big basin behind us or up and over the top and down we're probably going to drop another thousand feet after just climbing a thousand feet so we get up to that top and then, um, you know, there's now we've, we've kind of run out of deer tracks. Like we've passed all the deer tracks. It's You're kind above of the a deer little now. bit too, ste too deep of snow up there. And so, uh, we crest the top, we end up bebopping down, um, you know, sliding half the time and, and getting down into that next drainage. Well, you know, sometimes, uh, you kind of overlook some things when you're doing your, your e-scouting. One of those things that we overlooked in this next basin was the amount of boulder fields. Like you could tell it was rocky. Elevation wise though, it looked like if we were to get in the bottom, like we were able to kind of roll down that basin that would put us in the main drainage that we wanted to get to that kind of had this soft spot where we were um, planning on hunting. Well, we got down into that bottom 
in the boulder fields were pretty intense. So, so much more intense than we thought. I mean, I, right away, Joey snaps his, uh, his pole. He was trying out these new all carbon poles. We quickly realized that's like all carbon isn't the way to go in these boulder fields. They just break, you know, when there's that much snow, you don't, you know, when you're trying to cruise through those things, you end up jabbing a pole down in there and it just bends over, snaps it. So he's down to one trekking pole and, uh, it was about, it was, it was well over a mile of just solid boulder fields, a lot of snow, but we were dropping an elevation and, uh, to the point where we were actually in, I don't know, maybe only a couple inches of snow at the bottom of this thing. Okay. And then we kind of break through, we're, we're fighting brush and it's, it's one of those things where we're going down through this, like, man, are we making the right decision? Because we're dropping way, way down in this. We're fighting underbrush, kind of going over some stuff. And um, we finally break out of that thing. And we can now look up and we've got about 600 feet to climb to get up onto this spine, which is where in our e-scouting, we, we figured out this was going to be where we needed to get to the first start laying eyes on this, on this place that we felt would be good. When you, when you were dropping down into that hole, was there ever any worry of almost getting trapped down in there? Like it might get so steep that you kind of pinch yourself down in there and you're like, well, how do we get up? Those the canyon whole, walls are pretty steep. The whole time we were thinking, um, we're not coming back this way. <laughs> <laughs> we're going we're gonna to continue down <laughs> and we're going to get down to the point where um, the main drainage that we were heading into, if we were to follow that out, that would take us down to a river, which would then we could get to the edge of that river and kind of walk up river back to our base camp. Well, the problem was like on the maps, uh, those ledges are really hard to see even on Google earth, even looking at the tight topos. It's really hard to determine what's passable and not on Google earth on any kind of mapping. And, uh, so I'll go back. So we're, we, we end up figuring out like, uh, we're, it, it, we ended up camping uh, that first day in that boulder field, really tough to find a spot. And then the next day is when he ended up breaking down out of that boulder field. We could see up to where we needed to be. And it, it was almost like a, a southern slope had a kind of a yellow grass, like openness to it, which was great because we'd been traveling for a day and a half and just boulders. And uh, so we scurry up, get up to the top of that thing, and we're picking up deer. Like, again, like we're, we're in them finally. Um, cause there was a big stretch there of rocks where those deer just were not, there was no reason for them to be in. There's no feed. It was, it was like a North slope. Um, just too much rocks, no reason for them to be in there. So we find this little soft spot and, uh, we're both picking up deer. Like he's picking up deer. I'm picking up deer. It's the, the migration was like full effect. Uh, the bucks were rutting, but for the longest time, like we, I don't know, we probably saw six, eight different bucks, um, just off this one little spine. And so we kind of moved up the spine a little bit and, and we realized like there's not a whole lot of places on this thing where we can camp. There's, it's just not flat enough. And we had a, we had a teepee. It was, uh, gosh, it wasn't the smallest teepee on the planet. So it had a pretty dang big footprint, Yep. which as you know, can be really difficult to find. We were, we were, Joe and I used to use those little MSR hubbas a yep. lot because you could put those in a deer bed. Like you could carve out a spot anywhere and just find a comfortable spot. Well, we're packing around this massive teepee, you know, it's like a four man or something. Big footprint. Like it's taken us some time to try to find a spot that we could find a flat big enough to get it up. Nothing is flat. We'll settle for, you know, less than perfect. Um, so we end up getting... Once we got onto that spine, we started moving up that drainage and we're realizing like at this point, we, we should have brought way more food. We should have packed for a week straight. Like, like we should have, we should have brought like six, seven days worth of food to do this right. Cause we were just getting into the deer at that point, but still we hadn't seen anything of, of good quality. And, and, um, and we, like I said, we had 10 days on this trip to, to make this go. So once we got to that point and we really were able to lay eyes on, on this area, we realized this is where we want to be. Um, and so we were thinking ahead, like, well, if we go all the way to the head of this drainage, it's about another two and a half miles. 
It's kind of where we want to be, but we don't have the food. We're going to just get there. We're going to have to turn around and start heading back and we're going to be foodless. So what we wanted to do was boogie out of there before we go too far. But we got a massive trek to get back to camp. We got a lot of miles, steep country, unseen country. Um, and as you know, if you're traveling in that type of country, usually river bottoms are not that great at times. So it's usually the biggest mistake. And uh, we, we determined like, all right, we're starting to lose daylight. I think this was now on day four, something like that. We're going we're gonna to head back running low on food and uh pack up all the food we got for the rest of the trip head back up so we start heading down and i don't even know at this point mark how many deer we'd seen it feels like we had seen like maybe 50 to 60 different bucks okay a lot of young bucks though but we're seeing bucks everywhere and you know um we're looking for that one mature we ended up uh, having to go down that spine, you have to go through this north slope, can't get through the, the river bottom that on the main drainage, so we have to go down and around, and this is unseen country, so we're, we're trying to avoid the cliffs as best as possible. We get down in there, fighting through, we fight through the, the scrub at the bottom of the creek and get up on the other side, get up on another kind of south slope, and we're heading down mountain. And the goal is to get to the river tonight. So we're moving down up and over ledges and um come up and over this ledge lo and behold i look ahead i didn't even need to throw the binos up for this one I immediately know this is a this is a stud buck this is quick glance stud buck i threw the binos up and i turned around to joe and i was like i want this one i want this buck you know and we've been seeing so many deer that uh, he was like really like you see a good one really because they're Everything we had seen is, you know, like four-point bucks, but 24 inches, 25-inch max type right. bucks. Nice bucks, but, I mean, you guys are, you guys are back in there. And yeah, you don't want to yeah, you don't want to settle when you're back in that country. And we had really high hopes of getting way back further. So, like I said, I, I turned around. I was like, I want this buck. So, got down, got on a little ledge. This buck is 60 yards away. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> 60 yards away. Um, I got my 300 wind mag on that one and uh and that buck is feeding has no absolutely no idea we were there there's another pretty nice like 25 inch wide buck up to our left and uh we had glass several other bucks up on that side but somehow we missed this one like mm -hmm. once we're down there we're like how did we not see this big old stud and he must have just come out of the alders in the bottom and just he was only like maybe a quarter way up the that south slope and uh, so uh, I got down, got the rest, and double lunged this buck. And there's a video out there. Joe actually filmed that, that shot with his, with his phone. I think it was his phone. Um, and uh, I think actually Eastman's has it up. It's like a, it looks like it's farther. It's a 60 yard shot, double lunged buck. And that buck turns and he runs over Boulder Field and he runs about 50 yards. He gets like probably five, 10 yards from me and he tips over and he rolls down to the bottom. And I look at Joe and I'm like, holy cow, cause this big old massive thing, you know, he's got stickers and he's got this big kicker off his side and stuff. And I, I said, holy cow, did that just happen? Like out of nowhere, the yeah. last time you, you expect it. At this point we had just been trying to bomb down to the river so we can try to get back. And, uh, and I say that, I say, did that just happen? And I look up on the hill, and on the hill that we had just been on, that little soft spine, there's a group of deer and another big old buck that you can just see with your eye. Like you can see him skyline, 200, 210 yards away. And uh, throw the binos up. I'm like, holy smokes, that's a stud. So Joe grabs my rifle, gets down on the same rock that I had just been rested up on, drills that buck. Big old heavy, night, beautiful buck. So now we've got two, just like in a matter of seconds, we just took two really nice, big, mature animals. So you went from hiking out to get more yeah, food. We're, we're going to go get food so we can get back to go up back to where in. the big ones are, right? Like we now we know where, 
how this looks back here. We want to go back up here. The monsters are up there. Yeah. Well, now but the monsters heading, are dead. Yeah. Now we're <laughs> heading down, and we actually ran into the monsters on the downhill. And now we, we just took two really nice bucks. And, uh, yeah, couldn't believe it. It's just like one of those things out of nowhere when you least expect it. Kind of like elk hunting, archery elk hunting. It's, you, you think <laughs> this day is done, nothing's happening, and then 10 minutes later you got to pull down. So we're pumped up. We're excited. Uh, we break those deer down. We're running out of daylight. And um, we went down, somehow managed to find a semi-flat spot. We weren't able to. We, we basically broke them down real quick, um, got the meat off, got the meat hung down in that alder bottom there. And then it was like a mad, frantic search to try to find something flat that we could get this tent. It was really nasty, steep country. Yeah. Uh, mostly rock. And somehow we managed to find just a little, little spot. And we were able to carve it out, kick it out enough to uh, camp that night. So, we're, you know, we don't have much food at this point. But um, we, uh, next morning, get up, race up on the hill. We realized, like, not knowing where, like, how bad this trek out is going to be to try to get back to our base camp. Um, we want to go really light on this trip. And now... After we, after we get down there, we'll know what the best route is to get back in to, to just try to get all this meat out. So we took very little meat on the first one. Um, and so we each got a game bag on of meat. We're heading down. Not much. Get down to the river. Realize, um, now looking up river, like, holy cow, this is going to be really, really difficult. So now we're kind of dropping our stuff down, walking down these ledges, getting to the river bottom, having to hike back up, um, yellow steep country. It's just nasty. It's, it's again, it's sheep country. And uh, at this point, we're not really sure if there's any way we're going to be able to make it back to our base camp <laughs> up river like we wanted to. So we were threatening, like, well, um, the other side looks a little better. Maybe we should just blow up these air mattresses that we got <laughs> and just float across <laughs> this puppy. <laughs> You know, it was going to be cold, but um, but we didn't do that. And we ended up having to go way high on the hill. Uh, you know, we were going up and then down and just trying to avoid getting cliffed out. And at one point, we get oh, 1,500 feet up on the hill. We had to go up and over this big rock ridge because the, the whole bottom by the river was just rocks that went around. No, it was totally impassable. And yeah, probably 1,500 feet ish, maybe 1,200 feet up on the top. And we're looking across at what's ahead of us, and we see some rock shoots that are going down to a semi navigable way that'll get us, you know, another quarter mile towards base camp. And we're looking at these, these sheep, and uh, man, they're rutting like crazy, and a couple of really good rams in there. And we're watching them butt heads and just doing what rams do. And it was pretty cool. And then we start, and we take this one shoot underneath the sheep because it was the best route down we we're actually going to try to get down to the riverbed hike it up you know like i said a quarter maybe not even a quarter mile and then we're gonna to have to go back up on the hill again so we did that we got down there and we kind of forgot about those sheep we're down there by the river and uh i'm like man how about we grab some lunch and I think Joe is the one. He's like, mm, how about we just, let's just do it right up here, right at the end of the wall. We'll just do it there. So we do that. We hike another hundred yards or whatever to where the wall started. And we're going to have to climb up. And then we sit down, toss your bags off and uh, grabbing whatever food we had left. And then all of a sudden we look back, thought we heard it. All these rocks start breaking free. And right where like we had, want, we were going to sit, somehow those rams must have kicked those dang rocks off because it started a big old massive slide of giant boulders like somersaulting off the mountain and crashing into that spot no. right along the river some of them were in the river some of them were right where we were going to be sitting and me and joe were just like man that was close <laughs> like, <laughs> holy smokes uh got real lucky with not stopping on that one but um so we felt pretty fortunate that we didn't get smashed by rocks and then it took us another... It's always, it's always good to avoid death. Yeah, yeah, death is not good. Um, it took us another day to continually just go up and then back down and then up and then down and just forward as best we could. It took us forever. I mean, it had us pretty wiped out. I was going to say, that, that type of... And I don't think I've ever even done anything like that. 
but that type of up and down elevation gain just to lose it, just to work hard and gain it, to lose it again, I mean, yep. that's demoralizing. Oh, it's brutal. I mean, so we both had micro spikes and we wore on the entire time. The wow. micro spikes that you slip over your boots there. Yep. Those uh, Catulas. Um, luckily, those things are rock solid and they're hard to break because we had them pert near the entire time except for once we were on the rocks. Um, but yeah, so we, uh, there were several times in that little journey just to get back to base camp where I kid you not, Mark, I know it's, I know it's a bad thing when I start thinking about my daughters and my wife and I'm like, I got to play this right. Like, this is really you know, like, I'm, we were pretty puckered at the time. Yeah. Like this is, this is really dangerous. Our fall lines here are not good. Yeah. They're, there's big ledges that go down to the river. So, um, long story short there, we ended up getting back to base camp. Well, now we've got all the guys. We're like, well, let's just make this really like, so easy. So how, how many days you, you shoot the box and then h- how long until you get to base camp then? Uh, a couple days. A couple days. Okay. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So we get back there, uh, eat, eat a bunch of food, um, get recovered, uh, that night. Uh, and the boys determine they weren't having the greatest of luck down there. Seeing some smaller bucks, uh, at that point, uh, taking a couple young bucks, but they wanted to come help, uh, and see the area as well. It just help us get those bucks out cause they knew it was a, in a nasty spot. So what we tried to do is avoid that whole section altogether. Uh, we wanted to go up and over the top. So we climbed, you know, way up on the hill, up into that two feet of snow, up onto the rim. And we tried to go not through the boulder field down this other stretch that we felt like looked a little better. Well, it wasn't. Snowstorm came in, white out, um, complete blizzard. Couldn't, I mean, we couldn't see each other. And so what we decided to do is backtrack, go back down, um, and, uh, and get back down to base camp that night. It wasn't going to happen that night. We just weren't going to be able to um, camp on that in that blizzard up on that top. There's no point. So we marched back down, got down to base camp again. Next morning, Joe and I were like, all right, well, we're just going to do this ourselves. And uh, But we're going to get across this river. And one of the boys had a raft. It was not a good raft. It was... Uh, it was in a box, okay. like they had just got it from Walmart. Right. And it said 1999 on it. <laughs> <laughs> it was one of those rafts. The original pack raft. Yeah, yeah, one of those. Um, and so we, we hopped in that thing, we got, got across the river, and we did find an area where we could actually march down and use that raft again to get over to the bottom of the creek where we needed to go up and grab those bucks. Okay. And that's what we did. So um, we left that morning put a bunch of miles on, uh, got into our chintzy little raft, and it, it put us over into the bottom of the drainage where we killed our bucks. Marched up there several miles. Now, were you were you just using the raft to cross Just then? to cross. Okay. Just okay. to cross. Yeah. Yeah, that thing was not made for floating down that, <laughs> <You're> not, <laughs> that not, river at all. Not, not, a, not a class it, five capable. No, no, I think that was for just like little kids in a soft piece of pond water. <laughs> but we used it, and... Um, and, you know, there's two of us, so we have to both be in this thing. I don't know what the rating was on it, but it was not much. And uh, so we get down there, ended up getting all the way up there, getting those bucks, uh, one trip and all the rest of the stuff back down to our chintzy little raft. By now, it's really dark. You know, we went really light, didn't bring our camp stuff at all. We're doing this in a day, no matter what. And so get back down to that raft and, you know, we're using headlights kind of the tricky part about where this, uh, where we had crossed over was there's some rapids below us. And then we have to kind of row this raft up and we were just kind of walking it up Mm -hmm. with our hands on this rock wall to get above the rapids where we felt like we weren't going to get pulled down. Mm -hmm. We had enough steam to kind of go through this little bit softer water to get to the other side. And so we had to walk our way up that wall and it's dark and we're not too sure about if this raft isn't just going to like blow something out with this both being in there uh at first we we shuttled the meat over and had to do it again so it was a long river crossing took us some time to shuttle that stuff over because 
you know, just the fact that Joe and I were in the boat, that was a lot of weight. Don't want to have the deer meat in there as well. So ended up doing it, um, got it done. And by day's end, we had, uh, on the GPS, we had done 21 miles (laughs) that day. And so that was a long, long day, but, um, I can't remember the time the boys were actually up. They made sure they stayed up. Um, probably it was one o'clock that next morning or something that they ended up, uh, greeting us there at the uh, base camp. So, um, yeah, that's kind of, that's kind of how that story went. It's hard to describe like, uh, the pucker factor on the, that rocky country when you're on it and when you're in it. But the fact that we needed those micro spikes to kind of navigate all that terrain without just slipping off and down into that river was uh, pretty telling. Well, yeah. And then the fact that, I mean, you got those two big deer down, like you said, you're going back to get the meat. So you kind of need an empty pack, yep. but you're also going far enough into a nasty enough spot that you really should have gear to spend the night too. <laughs> yeah, we should have, right? I mean, it's, we you're, didn't. it's kind of a, a catch, a catch 22 there. We, and we thought long and hard about that. Like, uh, you know, do we just go as light as possible so we can is cruise like fast, fast hike the entire way. Mm-hmm. And we ended up going with that. It was like, no matter what, we're going to get ourselves back here, you know? So we didn't bring the tent. We didn't bring the bags. You know, we had, we had our puffy gear and stuff like that. So if we had to sleep out there, we could have, wouldn't have been comfortable. We could have got a fire going, but now we decided to kick out all the, um, you know, the sleep system and the, the tent and all that jazz. So yeah, it was a risk, but, uh, at the end of the day, it was a long, long day and we had two really, really nice big bucks golly that's awesome so you left you left at what in the morning and you got back at what in the morning oh it was early um and then yeah it was an entire day and then got back it's like probably one that next morning oh my gosh. something like that when i when i chatted with joey i think that one thing he said about that hunt was he's like that's when i learned with ryan there's like no limit like however far you think you can go or you can just keep going. Like there's like, there's no, there's no, you don't have really a governor of how far you will go or push yourself. What, I mean, like, and I mean, I think that speaks to your general toughness, uh, but also like the mental side of things. Like, I mean, ha- like, like how, how do you feel? Toughness that- or just not that smart? <laughs> I don't know, it's probably the, the latter. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know yeah. I've got one side of that in spades, but, yeah. um, no, that's that's super cool, man. Uh, we, uh, you and I, chat a lot, chat about hunting together. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't want to go on that. Hunt. You don't want to do that. No, one? I'm good. Really? We'll do oh. something a little bit different Damn. than that one. Huh? But uh, okay. no, man. That's I mean, that's <laughs> such a cool story, and I think just a true testament to you know, hey, you you, you probably can do more than you think you can do, yeah. and you know, I mean, obviously, you guys put yourself in some pretty precarious situations so mm-hmm. probably some maybe some lessons learned along the way too but uh well i think i think the key to doing those big trips is um you know joe and i hunt really well together and the reason for that and i think this is uh for everybody that hunts with a partner you 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 have to have a partner that never gets down he never like poo poos the situation he's never that debbie downer he's always upbeat like let's go we can do this what it whatever it takes mm-hmm if he has that whatever it takes mindset, which Joe does, mm-hmm. um, yeah, we're gonna keep ourselves going. There's just not gonna, we're not gonna stop. Yeah. So I could see it going the other way. I think anybody can get dragged down by pessimism or, you know, oh, I don't know if we can. Let's not do this or uh, let's just sit it out. But no, I think a good hunting partner is key to uh, pushing your limits and yeah, the separation um, you can do and the amount of travel you can do and. Uh, the kind of places you can find yourself in when you have a good hunting partner is uh, pretty pretty intense, like incredible. No, that's awesome, man. No, I appreciate uh, appreciate you taking the time to uh, number one uh, make that story, and then also uh, share it with us today. Uh, it's just as good the second time. And uh, <laughs> again, Joey is a much better storyteller. I don't than know, me. man. There's probably You're... a lot of details I forget, but. But, yeah, so, and it's those details that you forget that you go, no, we could go do that again. Yeah, like, <laughs> here's the thing. Joey could watch a squirrel run across the street, and he could tell that story for 
10 minutes where I'm like, yeah, the squirrel just ran across the street. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's awesome. Some man. folks have a gift, but. But uh, no, man, thanks for the time. Thanks for the story. Thanks for being you and all the great information, the good story. Uh, hopefully everybody enjoyed that. I know I did. Thanks for listening, Vortex Nation. And uh, we'll catch you on the next one. Take care. Happy hunting and shooting, everybody. There you have it, folks. Thank you very much for listening. As usual, give this video a like if you liked it. Comment something below and give us a subscribe to the Vortex Nation podcast channel. It would mean a lot to us. Also, why don't you give us a follow over on Instagram while you're at it, at Vortex Nation Podcast. We'd love to hear from you over there, and we'll keep you updated with all kinds of cool photos and videos from our adventures that we do here. Otherwise, we will see you on the next one. Thank you again. Happy hunting and shooting, everybody. Have a good one.